before you make a decision that could cost you a ton of money, I recommend you watch this video. I want to tell you five reasons why you shouldn't buy an RV. These are all my opinions, so keep that in mind. And a couple of them may be a little bit controversial, so I'm very curious as to your opinion. So if you don't agree with me, please drop a comment below. The first reason that you shouldn't get into RVing is if you think that it's going to be a cheap way to live. Traditional housing is definitely less expensive than owning an RV. If you're going to move at all, it gets expensive. Now, if you're going to buy like a trailer and set it in a real cheap RV park, that's a whole, whole different story. But uh, if you're planning on RVing and traveling, the fuel mileage just makes it way more expensive than traditional housing. Another reason that you shouldn't buy an RV is if you and your spouse aren't on the same page. I've seen it happen so many times. Those guys who's wife wasn't really too excited about the whole idea of RVing and uh, somehow he twists her arm and gets her to come out in the RV life and two three months later the guy has the thing listed for sale because he's smart happy wife happy life but he wasn't smart in buying that RV because that was probably a very expensive mistake it is very very difficult to get in and out of an rv without it costing you a lot of money make sure that you and your spouse are both on the same page the number three reason that i wouldn't recommend it is if you uh, have a job where you don't have a lot of vacation time and you're not going to be able to use it more than a month or two a year if you're going to have to pay for storage insurance license plates maintenance there's, there's just so much cost in owning an RV. When you look at cost of ownership over a year in an RV, you could end up staying at Ritz-Carlton's or Four Seasons. Uh, it's, it's just a very expensive proposition. There's no cheap way to, to go about it. But for what some of these people pay and the amount of nights that they use it, they could have flown first class, stayed at the Four Seasons, really done it the right way. Make sure that you're gonna be able to use the RV and that you're gonna be able to get RV sites because they keep making these RVs but they don't make more RV sites. So it get, it's getting harder and harder to find availability uh, here in Arizona. It's We're getting into the winter time right now. Florida's the same thing, Southern California. Really tough to get RV sites in the Sun Belt right now. The number four reason is if you're not mechanically inclined, all RVs are gonna have some sort of problem and require some sort of upkeep or fixing stuff. So you're gonna wanna have some tools and be able to uh, and do a little bit of troubleshooting on your own. If not, you can end up paying really expensive repair costs. And a lot of times I see a lot of fly-by-night RV repair guys out there where they'll charge you a hundred bucks to show up just to tell you that they're not able to fix it anyway. So you gotta be really careful too when you're hiring these RV service technicians. I see a lot of guys just throw a door magnet on the side of their truck and next thing you know, uh, people are handing over their money. So be very careful because they can do a lot more harm than good if you have the wrong person working on your equipment. If you're somewhat mechanically inclined, definitely helps make things a little bit easier. You're gonna save a ton of money in troubleshooting, and when something goes wrong, it just makes life a lot easier. Okay, number five, and actually I think I might end up going into like seven or eight reasons here. I actually asked a couple people that I have a lot of respect for, for some good good reasons, and, and we, we came up with a couple more here. So uh, number five reason is if you're not good at planning, RVing is not gonna be good for you. If you're kind of a last minute person, RVing is, is really tough because it's really tough to get RV sites. So it, it can make things a little bit stressful. Now, if you're not in any hurry and you're always able to kind of find somewhere to stay and you're able to boondock and you're able to be uh, resourceful at where you can park last minute isn't always a bad thing. I, th I think some of the best times happen last minute, but just keep in mind, like if last minute you want to come to Arizona right now and you can think you can just get an RV site, or if you just want to go to Florida and you think that last minute you're going to be able to get an RV site, you're going to find it's a lot more difficult. So you've got, if you are a last minute person, you've got to be ready. You may be having to move this rig every two or three days to, to stay in sites and and that can get a little hectic. You wanna make sure 
you plan ahead, you know where you're going to stay for a month or two at a time, you're able to settle down and, and have your stuff planned out definitely helps. So, uh, we're going to go, we're, we're going into number six reasons. Number six is if you're too uptight to enjoy this lifestyle, you know, some people are just so uptight and they're always worried about, is there a little nick in the paint or is everything perfect? Is there anything, you know, everything's wrong. The Wi-Fi has got to be perfect. The satellite's got to be perfect. You know, it's, some people just really are a little bit too uptight and there's, going to be stuff that goes wrong in RVing. So if you're really an uptight person, you're probably not going to enjoy RVing because RVing is going to throw some curveballs at you. Uh, that's the number six reason. If you're too uptight, I don't recommend you RV. So uh, number seven reason, and this is, this is one that's going to be a little bit controversial. And I'll explain, people may even say that I'm a little bit hypocritical because I've talked about this in, in past videos and I'll explain my whole situation as well. But number seven, if you're not able to pay cash for your RV, it's not a good idea. And I financed my RV. So this is advice coming from someone that financed my RV. Now, my justification for financing my RV is it's a business tool. I traveled with my business in the summer. It's even a tool for this YouTube channel. It's helped me kind of get in front of you guys and I've made a little bit of money. Now, the money that I've made from YouTube doesn't even come close to denning the amount of money that I've spent on that RV. Like I'm, I, I have almost a million views in the month of December right now. Thank you to all of you. Can't thank you all enough for watching these videos. Um, but even with a million views in one month, uh, the amount of, of upkeep on my RV and the amount of money that goes out in maintenance, insurance, I'm going to have new tires coming up. Not, you know, I'm, I'm looking ahead at that. That's going to be a big expense coming up. It's, it's just, it's super expensive. To be honest, my coach is way too nice for the business that I'm in. Maybe if I made a ton of money, it would make sense, but it's, it's a very expensive toy and it's definitely a poor business decision to invest that much money the return on investment just isn't there but for me it's just a passion thing too it's like an excuse hey i really really wanted to buy an rv uh, i'll figure out a way to i think i let my passion get into my business mind a little bit too much but i'm, I'm having fun with it so the reason why you don't want to finance it is is if, if for, first of all if you have to finance it the chances of getting approved are very difficult. You're gonna to have to have a huge down payment, great credit, and you're still gonna pay a much higher interest rate than like a mortgage or an automotive loan. Uh, these are much more difficult to repossess than cars. It's just, it's like a moving house. So if a bank loans you money on it, they wanna make sure, a lot of times they wanna make sure that you own a, a property too, and you're less likely to flee. It's, it's very difficult to get a loan on these. And if you do, you're paying a high interest rate. And a lot of people don't realize how, how much money it is because these RV loans get stretched out over 10, 20 years. And it's way different than a mortgage. If you get a mortgage on a piece of dirt, property values are guaranteed going to go up over time, you know, unless there's a few rare occasions where they don't. But traditionally over 20 year periods, property values are going to go up if you look at any market over 20 years. When you get a mortgage and you buy a house and you have a 10 or 20 year loan, it's making you money. But when you get a 10 or 20 year loan on an RV and then you're paying a higher interest rate, say you're paying 5% interest over 10 or 20 years on a depreciating asset. And these things depreciate like crazy. One of my buddies that buys all these supercars, Ferraris and Lambos was telling me, he's like, dude, these these RVs depreciate way worse than supercars. He's like, this is a way more expensive hobby than, than driving a Ferrari. Keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's a lot more expensive than people realize. So if I, you know, if you have to finance it, if you're using it as a business tool and there's some way that you can make money from it, then maybe you can justify financing it. If you're financing it and it's just a toy you might be getting yourself into um, a little bit more than you realize from, you know, as someone 
you know, before I got into RVing, I had no idea how expensive it was and, and I'm learning. So I just thought, you know, a lot of my videos are kind of hyping the RV lifestyle and how great it is. So I was driving around here in uh, Mesa, Arizona. There's a bunch of RV dealers right here. Just thinking about that, all the people that should not be buying RVs. If you fall into any of these categories, uh, you may want to reconsider making a huge decision and spending a huge amount of money on a depreciating asset. So hey, greatly appreciate all of you watching today's video. Hope you're all having a great day. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more RV related content. Thanks again.